All right. Get everything rolling. Good morning, good morning, good morning. <clears throat> One second here, let me get a drink of water. All right, God is doing some different things this morning. So we just going along for the ride, watching him show up and do some amazing things. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're all set. All right. Let us, um, let us open with a word of prayer. Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, we just then give you all praise and honor and glory and thank you for another day. Thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace upon our lives. We just ask now that you will help us with this word, help us understand, help us seek you, help us know what it is that you want to speak into our lives. Um, we humbly just ask that you will hide me behind the cross and that you will uh, just let them see Jesus and not me. Um, Holy Spirit, I ask that you will guide my tongue, um, that uh, you will say what needs to be said and hold what not ne is not needed to be said. Uh, we just want to lift up Jesus in all of this. Uh, Holy Spirit, come. <clears throat> Be powerful. Um, grab our attentions to the kingdom's work. Uh, we just want to give you all the praise and honor and glory. And uh, just to say again, we love you and thank you for loving us first. Bless this word right now in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, and I hope you've had a great week this past week. Uh, maybe even that you've uh, seen a God sighting here or there. Something good happened in your life, you know. Something might have just showed up and said, Ooh, that was good. Am I on? I am on. Huh? My, oh, my wife says I'm, I'm, I'm a little sloppy this morning, so she's trying to get me straightened up. Um, so in that, um, I just was just thinking about, okay, God, what is it that you want to say this morning? And uh, really just kind of seeing how this week has been kind of busy. Um, just watching um, just some things happening around our house and things like that. And even that. So, so in that, it's like always uh, that we, we get caught up in things. We get caught up in time. Um, that sometimes we's like, man, I wanted to get that done. You know, I wanted to go here. Um, like yesterday, I was, uh, I, was like, I was like, wanted to go with my wife. She had a thing to go to. But I was like, nah, I got to get this work done around the house because it's got to get done. If I don't do it now, it's not going to get done because time is just going to slip away. But I learned a lot about time management from sports. Um, especially, you know, um, basketball was my favorite sport. But, I, you know, I played different sports. I played cross country and then a basketball. I did baseball and also did track. Uh, wasn't too much into football. Didn't like the coaches of what the school that I went to, you know, because I just, I just didn't like the coaches, okay? Something, you know, I don't know, just what it was. But, but in that, learning about time, you learn about how things get done. And, but also, as you're watching in the game, there's, there's certain time breaks that you see and, and you identify those time breaks. And in those time breaks, you say, what do I need to do to adjust to do better in the game, especially for basketball. You know, when you get to the fourth quarter, it's like it's coming down to the last two minutes. Coaches saved at least one timeout, if not a couple timeouts, to be able to say, okay, I, I see this needs to be done. Let me call a timeout. Let's readjust. Let's get a break, catch our breath, and go over a play that might bring us victory in the game. I remember in high school, um, I was a part of my senior year. I was a part of an intramural team um, in that I wasn't, uh, I wasn't uh, tall enough to make the varsity team is what the coach said. You're good, you're good, John, but you're just not tall enough. I want a tall team. I want everybody to be way over six foot. And they were all over six foot, but they lost about every game. You know, so pff, maybe they needed some short people to, you know, to bring home the victory. I don't know, but that's beside the point. But we were in the, uh, the championship game of the intramural uh, 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 championship and uh, all the school was there in the assembly room and, and the two top teams was we were one of them and the other one and we, we started off the game which is before the game even started we were started off with a little contest of a slam dunk contest you know and I was I, as a short person I could still slam dunk it kind of cool eh? you know but, but it, we had fun with all of that but the game got serious when it got started it was a close game. It was within the whole game. It was back and forth. One point, one point. They got ahead one point. We caught them, got ahead one point. It was that way. It was intense. It was so intense the whole game. And it got down to the last five seconds and we called a timeout. 
We were down by one. All we needed to do was make one bucket, two points, and we would win the game. That was our thought. So in the timeout, we got the huddle. We came up with the play. We were going to get the play, and we were going to get Ray. We were going to sit Ray over in the corner, and then we were going to get the ball over to Mark, and then Mark was going to pass it to me, pass it to Ray. Pray Ray would make the shot, and we because he was really good. And he would make the shot, and we would win the game. And so we went. The ref handed off the ball. We passed it in just like the play, and it went off just like we laid it out. Ray made the shot. We were up. We were cheering. We were up. And all of a sudden, next thing we know, we're looking up in the sky, and the ball is flying over our heads. And there's a guy down there at the end of the court. He grabs the ball, and he slops it back up into his, ball, up in his uh, basket. And the buzzer goes off, and the ball's going dink, dink, dink. And it falls in, and we lose by one point at the buzzer. So in that, as I'm thinking about this game and God is laying it on my heart of what the message is to be, I ask you the time, in, in this life, this game of life that we're doing is to say, how much time? How much time for what? How much time until the end? Well, we're reading in Matthew chapter 4 is where we're going to go to. Uh, this question comes up from the disciples. And they're, they're in, in Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 and 2. I, I won't be reading that, but I'm going to start off in verse 3. It, it starts off like this. The disciples are showing off the, ch the temple, the church. They're going, hey, Jesus, ain't this temple cool? Ain't it awesome? Look at how the pillars are. And Jesus looks to them and says, yeah, it's really nice, but it's not going to be up for very long. It's going to come down. And the disciples are going, what? And so they waited for a minute to get Jesus over to the side where they can kind of have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And this is where we pick up the, the, the story. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 3, which starts off, And Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives. The disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the signs of your coming and the end of the age? See, everybody's kind of curious about that. They, they, they really think about it at some point or another in life. They think about all the bad stuff that's happening all around the world. And we're like, I wonder when the end is. Jesus goes on in verse 4. It says, and Jesus answered and he said, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah. And will deceive many. Let me hold up right there. Did you know that there is a list of men that call themselves the Messiah or the Jesus reincarnate? Seven men in the whole wide world right now call them that. They call themselves the Messiah. But hold on to this one. Right now, in Israel... The rabbis have pulled a man aside and have questioned him and given him all kinds of, of attention and they are calling this man the Messiah. He's already did five miracles that are noted in the news. They're making gatherings and stuff and they're even talking about rebuilding the temple. They got all the plans and everything to go. That they, they even found red heifers to start off to, to uh, sacrifice these red heifers and take the ashes and to, 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 to spread them out to consecrate the land to build the temple on. When the temple is built that they're going to do it again to, to consecrate the temple itself and start sacrificing just as they did in the Old Testament. Why? Because they know God is the forgiver of sins because of a blood sacrifice. And Jesus is saying, don't be deceived. For many will come in my name. Don't be deceived. Let's read on. Verse 6. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars to be... Um, but, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. Wow, let's stop right there. This thing, I just, right there, come right off the bat, I'm thinking of wars and rumors of wars. Right off the bat, I go to Russia and Ukraine. Russia invading Ukraine, wanting to take it over. Then you think about China um, wanting to go into Taiwan, take over Taiwan. That they're, they've even... 
They even called up and started building their army up. That they're saying 18 years and older, that they're making a draft and they're pulling people in and building the army because they mean business to go into Taiwan. Afghanistan has a civil war and terror insurrection. Burkina Faso is a terrorist insurrection. Colombia is a civil war and drug war. The Congo, terrorist insurrection. Ethiopia, civil war. Iraq, terrorist insurrection and political un unrest. Mali, civil war. Mexico, drug wars. Nigeria, terrorist, in ter terrorist insurrection. Somalia, civil war. South Sudan, ethnic violence. Sudan, terrorist insurrection. Syria, civil war. Yemen, civil war. And just think about this one. China over the U.S. just sent a balloon to kind of do a, a, a like a what's going on in America kind of deal. And America shot it down. And so China says that, uh, this is an act of regression towards us. We're going to take this serious. So what are they going to do now? If they're going to take this serious, what are they up to? Did you know that China has taken up and bought up massive amount of farmlands in the United States of America? What, are the, what, is this, what does this nation have planned? Do you know that they sent other balloons over to other different countries? South America and other, other areas? What, are, what, is this, what is this country up to? Let's read on. It says, there will be famine and earthquakes in various places. Famine. There are five major countries that are in famine right now. Central Africa Republic, Chad, Democratic Republic of Congo, Madagascar, and Yemen. And there's four right behind that. Burundi, Somalia, South Sudan, and Syria. But in the last two years, America has seen multiple farms burnt down. Diseases come to cattle and the thousands and thousands of cattle dead in their fields. Recently, chicken farms blowing up and burning up. Let alone the problem with the chicken feed and the, the chickens quit laying eggs. For the first time in the last two years in America, we have ever seen empty shells in America. So far, what I'm reading here, Jesus is the one who's uh, saying all these things. He is prophesying and is spot on for this time. How about earthquakes? Just even the thought of the earthquakes in Turkey, where the first two earthquakes at a 7.6 and a 7.8 began an 18 hour of earthquakes. They had 27 earthquakes in 18 hours in Turkey. Could you imagine that all around you? You would be afraid to go anywhere, be around anything that might fall down on you and kill you. But just the thought of it, in America, since 2023, there has already been 150 earthquakes. Ohio, Southeast Missouri, Oklahoma, Nevada, Utah, Texas, Washington State, and California. How about that one in Buffalo, New York? An uh, earthquake in New York? You would never think of such a thing. 3.8 on February 6th. California on February 1st had 10, 10 earthquakes averaging from a 2.8 to a 3.1. In the last 365 days in the world, world kept records of a two-point or greater earthquake was 59,880 earthquakes around the world. Well, I think Jesus is spot on on that one. What do you think? Let's read on. All these are the beginnings of birth pain. Birth pain. Jesus is saying this is the beginning of troubles. 
birth pains. What do I know about birth pains? Well, I know like today is the celebration of my, my daughter, Brittany's birthday. Shout out to my daughter. Ber- Happy birthday, Brittany. But I was there in the room when she was being born. And I'll tell you what, I don't know the pains myself of giving birth to a, to a baby. But I do know the after effects because my arm was being squeezed. And then I heard the words, it's your fault, it's your fault. And my arm was being squeezed and I thought it was going to come off. That tells me the pressure of birth pains is great. It tells me that the pressure of birth pains is very uncomfortable to the point that it is very, that somebody is screaming that the pain is so intense. Jesus is saying this type of issues is coming. It is the beginning of birth pains. When, we get, when a woman's giving birth, it first starts off with a little pressure. This is what they tell me, okay? A little research done. Is a little pressure. The, everything inside the woman is trying to and, and like get the baby out, get the baby out. And then there's a time of relaxation for uh, maybe hours. Hours and hours and hours. And then all of a sudden, but the thing about it is, is that the time starts happening closer and closer. And the pain gets intense and intense and intense. And sometimes it gets unbearable until the baby is born. And for a man, they say the, to, the closest thing to that kind of pain is passing a kidney stone. I know about that one. And that was horrible. Maybe I was going to pass out. Jesus is saying, when you recognize these things, this is the beginning of pains and issues that are coming. And I see everything that he says, I'm seeing it happening right before us. How much time do we have until the end? Put aside that, let alone, you're not a point, you, you, you don't know the end of today that you might live or die today. People could die in accidents. They could die, I mean, look, there's people dying of heart attacks left and right now. That's another issue we'll talk about later some other time. Cancer. Other diseases, pneumonia. To put all that death aside is still to look at the focus of what God is saying through the word in Matthew that there is going to be an end of things. And wherever there's an end of things, there's a beginning of things. Let's read on. Verse 9. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted, put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. This is Jesus talking. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. Wow. I thought being a Christian was all goody and everything was going to be good and happy, you know, and we're just going to be, woo, we're going to heaven. I got my get out of jail. I mean, get out of hell free card. You know, I thought that's what that meant. But Jesus is saying to be a believer is going to be just like the disciples that followed him 2,000 years ago, that they were murdered because they were sharing Jesus is the only way to heaven, to God Almighty, for remission of sins, to be forgiven of your sins. You need to repent and follow him. Put him, Lord, over your life. And, and in that, that was the only way. And because of that message of hope, they were killed. And that this expectation is here upon us as well. No wonder it says that there's going to be a falling away of the faith. Because there's going to be so many cowards. They're going to say, that was a Christian is going to be about. That you're going to have to die. Be shot. Hung on the gallows. Or vaccinated to death. I'm not following Jesus. I'd rather just live and take my chances that maybe there is no God. Maybe this is all a, 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 a fairy tale. But we see that they're being persecuted. We see the beginnings of it. A woman in Canada, she's standing across from, a, a, um, from an abortion clinic. She's not praying out loud. She's being to herself. She's not bothering nobody. And the police officer comes up to her and says, what are you doing? She says, I might be praying in my mind to save these babies. And they arrested her. Did you know that California passed a law to, to prohibit the sale of any book that is a, a, a hate crime towards somebody else? 
The intention of the law was to stop the sale of Bibles in California. No, that's not what it does. No, that's exactly what they meant. Because why? The Bible says that homosexuality is a sin. The Bible says that a man living with a woman outside of marriage is a sin. It's fornication. The Bible says that lying is a sin. This says the Bible says that you, these things are sins against a holy God and you need to stop it. So for the sinner, they want to do these things. So they want to have a free conscience to do these things. They want everything that tells them in their conscience that this is wrong to go away. If I cut it out of my life, I'll be good. It's like eating right. You want to be healthy? You got to eat right. But if you have somebody over here that's, that, that the voice is saying, don't, don't eat those noodles and noodles. They're bad for your health. Don't eat those things. The ramen noodles are bad for your health. If you don't have that voice in your head, you're going to go ahead. That voice goes away. You're going to go ahead and eat them. Why? Because they taste good. Even though they're going to clog your arteries and give you a heart attack at a young age, they're good. They're delicious. Right? Right. Hate speech. We will be persecuted. You'll be made fun of at school. You'll be made fun of at work. You may be fu made fun of online. That's, that's nothing compared to put to death. But when the time comes and you start seeing people executed or put in jail because of their faith, the pastor, there was a pastor in, um, in Canada as well. He came to visit America to, to preach some things that was going on in Canada. And when he came back, as soon as he got off the plane, they were there to arrest him. Let's read on. Verse 11. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people because of the increase of wickedness the love of most will grow cold let me hold right there for one second because this is standing right out blatant that you know the grammys that just happened on 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 tv how we had we had uh, maverick city and and uh, what's 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 the other guy to um no, no um 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 Kurt Franklin, who stand in the, in the gap of saying that they sing gospel, they sing about Jesus Christ, go to this thing, and they blatantly in front of everybody and the world have a satanic worship time to serve, to worship the Satan as their God in front of these people of God. And nobody says nothing and does nothing about it. And America has let it happen. False prophets will deceive many. We see pastors and bishops and, 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 and whatever else you want to call them across the world. It's all about the mighty dollar. They don't even, they, they get up and do feel good sermons. They don't even read one bit of scriptures from the Holy Bible. And the people are the sheep, dumb as a box of rocks, and they're falling right on them. Because why? They want their wallet fatter. They want to prosper. And there's no thought about dying and going to hell or the wages of their sins and the sins that they're living in and continue to live in. There's no conviction brought to them. And Jesus is saying, beware. Watch out for these guys. But in verse 13 it says, But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. How much time? How much time do we have? Because what I see is we have the capability right now to reach the whole world through technology, through the internet, through the phone service. That 
preachers, individuals that are creating TikToks, they're creating Instagrams, and they're doing their own little videos, sharing Jesus Christ. It's not just all up on the pastor. It's not all up on the bishop. It's not up on uh, all on the, 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 the elders or, or the, the evangelists. It is any person that the Spirit of God is coming upon and say, hey, you need to share this, uh, this word on, on your social media. The gospel of Jesus Christ is going forward. It's reaching the most different. Listen, think about this. Just the live right now. I was even challenge you. If you're watching, wherever you're watching from, in any part of the world, just type in there where you're watching from and watch what the truth of what God is saying. Some are watching from Kenya. Some are watching from, from Charlotte. Some are watching from, I, you know, I don't know where. But I would challenge you just to say this part of the scripture is coming true. Maybe you might be watching the recording of this. I would say just still type in where you're from to show that those word of God is true. Jesus is prophesying this is the time. How much time do we have? How much time? And as we ask this question, what are we supposed to do with this much time left? We're in the game of life, like the basketball game. Two minutes is, uh, uh, is left in the game. I don't know if we have two minutes. I don't know if we have the rest of the day. I don't know if we have 15 years. But what I know by the recognition of what Jesus said, time is short. So what are we to do? First off, as believers, we're to be the light. We are to be the light for Jesus Christ. And John 8:12 it says this. And again Jesus spoke to them saying, "I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life." We are to walk as Jesus walks and let his light shine through us. That means love one another, be kind to one another, forgive one another. That's a hard one for a lot of people, forgiving. Then from there, your actions will show that you are a follower of Jesus Christ. Not the actions of when you're out there, in, you know, clubbing it up on Friday night or you're in the school because you want to be popular and you're just getting along with everybody saying the cuss words and flicking people off and saying, up yours, you know what I mean? It's to sit back and say, no, I'm not going to do those things. I'm going to be a person of respect because I represent Jesus Christ, your actions. Matthew chapter 6, it reads this. And before, before, uh, I mean, I'm sorry. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. Whew. For then you will have no reward for your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpets before you. As the hypocrites do in the synagogue, and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And then you pray. You must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, and they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their rewards. Listen to what he's saying there. It's those that stand up in the church and do all the woo -hoo -hoo -hoo, and then on Monday they did they live in like hail. Living just like the lost sinners that are going to die and go to hell. They're doing the exact same thing. Rolling one up there. Smoke one. My nerves are shot. I got to get high. You know, I got to calm down, you know. And they turn around and take a shot. Drinking some alcohol. Cussing and, and gossiping. And just absolutely acting like the lost. Hypocrites. That's why a lot of lost people say, I'm not going to church. Too many hypocrites in that church. I ain't going there. Then what are we to do next? We are to testify. We are to testify what Jesus has done for you, for us. 
1 Peter 2, 9 says this, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for His own possession, that you may proclaim the excellence of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. You are to testify the goodness that what God has done for you. I remember in the eighth grade, well, it was actually the summer before my eighth grade year. I was at my grandma. She has a, a, an out-of-the-ground pool and had a deck in there. And, and, and I've been swimming in it all day. And my cousin came over, my cousin Terry came over to come hang out with us for a little bit and go swimming with us. And I was like, man, I got this backflip down, Terry, man, check this out. And I got over to the edge of the deck. And I got over to the edge of the deck. And I'm standing there doing my little bounce thing. And I went, whoop, and I jumped up, but I didn't push out far enough. And I didn't flip my legs over far enough. And I came down. And I hit the edge of the pool with my neck and I broke my neck. The seventh vertebrae on my neck. Well, crazy thing is, is that I went home and my mom just thought maybe I just bruised myself or something like that. So she gives me some aspirins and just propped up some pillows and let me sit on there. So I slept all through the night. Well, I didn't sleep very well, but I came through all the night. And my mom's like, well, let's take you to the chiropractor. Maybe your back's out of whack or something. So she takes me to the chiropractor and the chiropractor takes x-rays of it. And, she said, and he comes in there going, uh, 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 slaps the x-rays up and says, get your boy to the hospital right now into the emergency room because he broke his neck. And I don't even know why he's sitting here. I don't even know how he's sitting here. He should be dead. The testimony of the greatness of God to keep me alive to this point of my life is for a reason. And then the reason is to share his goodness and protection. What has he done for you? Why won't you tell anybody? Testify of his goodness. From that point on, it will open up the do door to share the salvation of God with other people. It's not that I can't be where you are. So God is going to use you where you are to show others salvation. And it's real simple through this, this little scripture. So if you want to take notes, screenshot it wherever you're at. It is called the Romans Road. It's Romans chapter 3, 23. It says this, For all have sinned in the, and fallen short of the glory of God. This is to understand there is nobody perfect. There is no one going to make it to heaven on their own works. All have fallen short. All have sinned. But in Romans 5, 8, it says this. It says, But God demonstrated his own love towards us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That he's saying, listen, listen, listen. I know in your sinful state, you got to have a way out of that sinful state. And so in that, I love you, I care about you, I'm going to make a way out. I'm going to use my son as the way out. He sent his son to be born of a virgin, to grow up and live a sinless life, and then lay down his life to be the sacrifice, blood sacrifice that is needed to wash away the sins of you and me. And as he died on that cross, that sacrifice was made. And then he was put into a tomb. And three days later, he was raised from the grave. To what? To be the way to a holy God and be covered by righteousness because of Jesus. Let's read on. It says, and then, and then going to uh, Romans 6, 23, it says, for the wages of sin is death, but the Gracious gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's to understand. Listen, listen. Listen, listen, listen. Sin has consequences. The end consequence, let alone there's consequences here on earth. Having sex outside of marriage, you might get the cooties. non gynecocuritis Or you might get somebody pregnant and then you got to raise a child for 18 years and you got to deal with somebody that might not even want to be a part of it. And you got to raise the baby by yourself, and now everybody's got to suffer from it. All because you wouldn't keep your pants on. Sin has consequences. Now, are you hearing me? In the back, in the back. Hey, in the back. Do you hear me? Sin has consequences. 
The end result of sin is called wages. That means it's the cost it pays. And in that, when you die, you're going to stand before a holy God and be judged. And in that judgment, what is it going to pay? What's going to pay for those sins? If you don't have the blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ on you, you're going to be sentenced to pay for those in a place called hell. Eternal separation from a holy God and to burn and burn and live in darkness and pain and suffering where your soul forever and ever. Then there's Romans 8, 1. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. God forgives you of your sins. He throws them as far, he, he, he casts them as far as the east is from the west. The east from the west never meet. They always go that way. So in that, as he has forgiven you, you are forgiven yourself. To forgive yourself, there is no condemnation in this. Then Romans 10, 9. That if you will confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Not if, if you do this, not, his word is standing true. You will be saved. So as we close, do you see what time it is? How much time do we have left in the life, the game of life? How much time, maybe for you, Lord willing, you have 10 more years if Jesus doesn't come back. I don't know. But maybe, maybe, if the calendar of how God does things says we only have this amount of time left, what are you going to do in that amount of time? Are you going to surrender your life and make Jesus Lord and, and be born again and get saved so when it's over, you're in heaven? Or are you going to continue to play with the devil and with sin and take your chances and then you'll find yourself in hell? What are you going to do? I encourage you today. Today is the day of salvation. Will you choose Jesus Christ Will you choose to repent and follow him? Will you choose to put away your sinful way of living and make Jesus Lord and King over your life? Maybe today you were a believer a long time ago, but you've walked away and you're, you're just you're still wandering around. You're like, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. God's coming for you right now to say to you, I love you. It's time to come back, my child. Put away the sinful living. Come back, repent, sell out, follow Jesus. Will you do that? And for you that have never been saved before, today's the day. Just to pray the simple thing of seeking God. Say, will you save me, Jesus? I believe in when everything that was written in the book saying that you died for my sins and you were raised from the dead. I believe that and I want to be saved. I want to be born again. And will you put your Holy Spirit inside me to change me from the inside out? Will you do that today? Will you pray with me as we close? Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, again, we just thank you for the opportunity to, to share your word. Holy Spirit, I pray now that you will come upon all the ears that are hearing this of the words of Isaiah, that this word will go forth and it will accomplish the things we are into descent, that you will bring salvation to those that are lost that you will bring restoration to the believer that has walked away, the prodigal son or daughter. I pray for Holy Spirit conviction to draw us back to Jesus. Forgive us of our sins, for we have sinned against you. We are a people of unclean lips and action. Wash us with the blood that was sacrificed on the cross of Jesus Christ. Bring the power that raised him from the dead upon us and baptize us with your Holy Spirit to change us from the inside out. Clean us 
from the inside out. That we may be born again and we may put Jesus as Lord over our life. Father, if, you've heard, if, you, if anyone has prayed that prayer, Holy Spirit, come upon them and lead them to a good Bible-believing church that they can get a part of and learn more about how to behave and to act, the actions that you require to walk like Christ walked. To step away from the way of sin and quit living in the sin. And to put on the righteousness of Jesus so that others that are lost will be found too. God, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Holy Spirit, I love you. I ask you in Jesus' name, will you bless everyone here and everyone that's watching online to see truth, to see the light. There is purpose even in the darkness. For you showed in Genesis 50, 20, for what was meant for evil, you turned for good to save many people. Bless your people today. I pray and ask with your love, your mercy, and your grace. In Jesus Christ's holy name, I ask. Amen. You are dismissed.